Drummer Jack Irons has had a pretty storied career, being the original drummer for Red Hot Chili Peppers, and was inducted with the band into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. In addition to that, he played with Pearl Jam for nearly half a decade before leaving the group, and Irons would go on to play with Courtney Love, Eleven, Neil Young, Joe Strummer, and the Wallflowers, to name a few, in addition to having a solo career. One of my subscribers requested the story on why he left Pearl Jam, and that's what we're going to explore in today's video. Jack Irons would be an original member of the Chili Peppers who formed in 1983, but five years later, by 1988, the band's guitarist Halal Slovak passed away due to a drug overdose. For Irons, it was the final straw and he soon left the band, recalling to the book Grunge is Dead. I was really struggling with my mental health. I was having a nervous breakdown and that went on for a long time. He would go on to reveal he was diagnosed with bipolar disorder and it was a lifelong battle that he's still fighting. It was following Slovak's death, Irons thought about giving up on music and pursuing something else, but he got an offer to drum for former Clash frontman Joe Strummer, something he agreed to do. It was on that tour Irons met his wife and future Pearl Jam frontman Eddie Vedder. It was at a gig in San Diego, Vedder attended the show knowing some of the people who owned the venue, and Vedder wanted to meet Irons because of his history with the Chili Peppers, as well as Strummer. It was after meeting with Vedder for the first time, Irons would reveal in the same book, after that, we kept in touch and started to hang out and play basketball together. Like every weekend, he would drive up from San Diego to LA, where I was living. He and my wife were the two main people in my life at the time. In 1990, one of Seattle's up-and-coming bands, Mother Love Bone, would disband after frontman Andrew Wood died of a drug overdose. Mother Love Bone members Stone Gossard and Jeff Ament were picking up the pieces and starting a new band that would eventually become Pearl Jam. Gossard and Ament would reach out to Irons, knowing him for his work in the Chili Peppers, to join their new project, but the timing wasn't right with him recalling the Rolling Stone. I remember meeting Stone and Jeff at their hotel. They came to LA to do whatever they were doing, and I met them. We talked. They asked me about playing with them for their new band, trying it out. I had so many things going on in LA post Joe Strummer. I had started my band Eleven. As I mentioned, I met my wife to be. By the time I met Jeff and Stone, she was pregnant. The gig required uprooting and going to Seattle. I couldn't do it. I had already committed to doing a tour with Red Cross for like three months and I really needed the gig. While the pair were disappointed that Irons couldn't join them, they would give them their demo tape in case he knew any singers. He would end up passing the tape on to Eddie Vedder, who of course became Pearl Jam's frontman. Pearl Jam would end up finding a different drummer in Dave Cruzen, who played on the group's first album, 10. He would be temporarily replaced by Matt Chamberlain, and then replaced by fan favorite Dave Abruzzisi, who played on 1993's Verses and on the group's 1994 record Vitalogy. A personality conflicts led the band to firing the drummer, and I've done a whole video on why he was fired, the link is down below. I've also done a video on Dave Cruzen's firing, the link to that video is also down below. By 1994, Irons was playing in his band Eleven, who just put out their second record and opened for Soundgarden. But the band struggled to have the same level of success as other alternative groups, and it was at that point Irons and his family left LA and bought a cabin in Norman, California, but he hadn't planned on what to do to make money. By August of 94, Irons would hear that his friends at Pearl Jam had parted ways with Abruzzisi and he would call his friends in the band and ask if they were looking for a new drummer and ask for an audition. He would recall to Rolling Stone, Eddie brought me in, we jammed, I spent some time with Stone, I stayed with him. We were jamming in his basement, they had a bridge school show that was coming up, so they used me. I think I officially got in there when we did the shows that we were on before Neil Young at a benefit concert in Washington DC. I think it was a Gloria Steinem event. That was my first official he's part of the band. Irons would play on several tracks on Vitalogy, perform on 1996's No Code and 1998's Yield, while also getting a few writing credits. But by 1998, Irons would quit the group recalling to Rolling Stone. I didn't handle stress on the road well at the time. I had a young family with two children. I was just getting really exhausted. It was some deep place exhaustion. Pearl Jam was ready to come back full swing and hit the road. This was post Ticketmaster and they were like, it's time to hit the road. We went to Australia and I just struggled there. I struggled to find my balance, to get my rest, to recover, to be ready for the next one. It was a lot of pressure. Irons would leave the group and be replaced by former Soundgarden drummer Matt Cameron. In 2017, Pearl Jam would be inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, and while Irons had previously been inducted with the Chili Peppers, he wouldn't be inducted as part of Pearl Jam, but he would still be in attendance, alongside the group's other drummers from their past. That does it for today's video, guys. Thanks for watching. Be sure to like button and subscribe. We'll see you again in Rock and Roll Stories. Take care.